What's up you guys? Today I thought we could talk about some under the radar drugstore products that I personally am wondering why haven't these gone viral because they are so good. So I thought it would be fun to just share my thoughts. I have talked about some of these products in past videos. Some of them I haven't. So either way, I just feel like they deserve more love. So just quickly, if you're new here and you enjoy drugstore makeup, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I talk about that a lot here on this channel and every video is completely unsponsored. So so with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. Okay, so the first product is from Neutrogena. I actually have a couple things from Neutrogena because I think as far as under the radar brands go, they're probably number one in my mind because they're the display that I just kind of walk right past like when I'm in the drugstore, I'm just not even really looking at it or paying attention. And I think that happens with a lot of us, but they have some really solid, really good products that I've been reminding myself of lately. So um, this first one actually, I I think it might be new because I haven't seen it before. It's the Hydra Boost Lip Oil. So I saw this in store and it actually looked really good. It just comes in clear. It doesn't have any shades, but I really hope that they actually do come out with shades later on because I think that would be awesome. It's really just like a very, very pale pink, but on me, it kind of goes on mostly clear. I might see just the tiniest little hint of tint, but what I love about this so much is just like it has the hyaluronic acid in the formula, so it helps to kind of plump up your lips, but without any stinging or burning, it doesn't even tingle. It just feels really smooth. It has this thick cushiony feel and it's really, really nourishing. And I notice such a big difference in my lips from before and after. Like before I have a lot of lines in my lips and it makes them look dry even when they're not. So I love these type of products that just fill in those lip lines and make everything look super smooth. And this absolutely does that for me. My lips look so much better when I wear this and they just feel amazing as well because it's just that really really nourishing, hydrating, cushiony feel. Another huge plus is that this is completely unscented, so it doesn't taste like anything, doesn't smell like anything. I really love that. So overall, I just think this is an amazing lip oil at the drugstore that I haven't heard anybody talking about. It could be because it's more new, but I feel like if more people tried this, it would become more of a viral product. Another really awesome product from Neutrogena is their Healthy Skin Glow Perfector Pen. So this has been out for years and years, and I've actually gotten a couple of messages from you guys asking if I've tried the new Neutrogena concealer pen, but it's actually not new. It just is in brand new packaging. This has been out for many years, but I have to say it's actually a really good dupe for YSL's Too Chiclot. It is so similar. It's this really thin, lightweight, fluid texture. And yes, it's a concealer, but I don't feel like it has a ton of coverage, kind of like the YSL version. It's very sheer, but it has this brightening effect. And I think it's because at least the two shades that I have, the two lightest shades, have this like peachy pink sort of undertone. And that really helps to color correct any kind of darkness that's under your eyes. And it's so thin, you can actually layer this under a concealer and just use it as a corrector if you want to. Or if you're like me and you don't have a lot of dark to begin with. You can probably just use this on its own and you're good. But if you have more dry skin like I do, this is just, again, very nourishing under the eyes. It never looks dry or cakey. I can't say if it's going to crease or not on oily skin types, you know, because that's like the total opposite of mine, but I know that it doesn't crease on me and I don't feel like I have to set it down with powder either. It, to me, it kind of feels like a moisturizer when I'm putting it on, but not like a super thick green one, just like a very light skincare type of product that really just sinks in and hydrates my skin without being like too greasy. So this is another amazing find from Neutrogena. Another huge favorite from Neutrogena that I have been using just for years and years are their Hydra Boost hydrating lip shines. So these are one of the most smoothing lip glosses I've ever tried. They really do make a huge difference in, again, my lip lines. They have that hyaluronic acid in the formula that just really goes down in and plumps out all of the lip lines and gets rid of the dryness. These also come in so many beautiful colors. I actually just replaced some of the older ones in my collection with new ones. And at first I went out to the drugstores to try to look for these. And unfortunately they don't put seals on the packaging, which Neutrogena, you need to get on that um, because every 
every single one that I opened had been already tampered with and swatched and that is so frustrating. So I ended up just ordering these on Amazon because that way I know nobody's been in store touching them and they were perfectly good. So I would recommend doing that if your drugstores always have issues with people opening stuff up. I mean, I feel like most of them do, but this is just such a stellar formula, especially because again, it has no fragrance, no taste, and it gives your lips that really soft, cushiony texture without a lot of stickiness. So if you like more of a smooth lip gloss, these are awesome. Okay, so I have two more things from Neutrogena. I kind of went on a little bit of a kick, but I'm reminding myself of all their amazing products that are from this brand. So another thing I wanted to mention is the Hydro Boost Hydrating Tint. I know I've talked about this on my channel, but it was probably years ago. I know I haven't talked about it more recently, but I have been raving about this since I was a blogger, like pre-2018 when I started my YouTube channel. This is just one of the best skin tints that I've tried, and I've tried so many because they're really popular right now. And most of the drugstore ones that I've tried just in the past month or so have been huge fails. They all look so dry on my skin. It's been quite a frustrating process. I feel like the only one I really loved is the new one from CoverGirl. But this one for me is kind of similar in the way that it just makes my skin look like I'm not wearing any makeup, but it still evens things out. And and when I looked at the Neutrogena display in my CVS, they have all of their different foundations and underneath on the shelf, it'll say what skin type it's for. This one is specifically listed for dry skin. So I think if you have more oily skin or even combo, I don't know if it's gonna be like too much hydration or too dewy, but on my dry skin, it is fabulous. When I put this on, I remember the first time I ever used it, and even though it was years ago, it sticks in my mind because of how surprised I was. When I first put this on, I was like, it really doesn't have much coverage. I didn't feel like it did a lot for my skin, but then I kind of walked away and later on, I remember going back into the bathroom or something and I just happened to glance at my skin in the mirror and I was like, whoa, my skin looks so good. It just sort of plumped out any fine lines that I had and it took a little while. Like I said, it didn't look amazing when I first applied it, but throughout the day, I was just so impressed with how my skin looked and then I just started using this religiously. Now again, it doesn't have a ton of coverage. So if you have some areas that you need to kind of spot conceal, that's usually what I do with this. But overall, this is a skin tint that makes your skin look like a better version of itself. And I feel like that's kind of what skin tints are supposed to do. So I love this. And last Neutrogena product, I don't wanna go too in depth with this brand. I should probably just do a whole video on them. Um, but also from the Hydra Boost line, we have this stick concealer. So as a rule, I don't really love stick concealers because they always look very dry and very cakey on me. And I know I tried the new one from NYX recently and I thought that one was pretty good. But this one is definitely my holy grail favorite stick concealer that I've ever used. And again, this is going back years at this point. So I think the Hydra Boost line is just great. If you have dry skin, you can't go wrong with these. But this is the type of concealer that has kind of like the moisturizing core in the middle. And I'm pretty sure, I think it was Benefit, either had one, I don't know if they still have it, but they had one at one point in time. And I remember saying this was a dupe for the benefit and it really was super similar. When I put this on under my eyes, it just glides across your skin and it has that moisturizer type of feel again. So it looks incredibly smooth, it's not cakey. Again, it doesn't crease on me, but my skin is really dry, so most stuff doesn't. I just love how smooth this is and just the ease of use. You know, when you're putting it on your face, it's just so quick. I just blend it with my fingers and it's just one of those products that makes it so quick and easy to just get ready in the morning. So I think this is so good. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of these Neutrogena products down below. If you've tried them, let us know your thoughts. Another brand that has some really, really good stuff that nobody's talking about is Joa. So I wanted to mention their BB cream. This is called the Perfect Complexion BB Cream. And I know I've talked about this on my channel before, but I've been using it again lately and just thinking about how much I love this more than all of the other skin tints that are coming out recently. Because again, I just think this one doesn't look dry. It has this really creamy feel, kind of like you're putting on a moisturizer, but it has a nice amount of tint to it. And while it's not a full coverage, I would say 
say it's more of a light to medium. So it gives you a little bit more coverage than a regular skin tint would. Definitely more than the Neutrogena one that I just talked about, but yet it looks incredibly natural. It has a really satin skin-like finish. It's not too matte, it's not too dewy. It's just the perfect amount. I think even if your skin isn't dry, you would probably get along with this one because I find that it dries down pretty much all the way. My skin doesn't feel sticky or tacky after applying this. Like once it sets down, it's, it's good. And another thing I love about this is that it doesn't have too radiant of a finish because a lot of these skin tints and BB creams that are out nowadays have that glowy look. And at 46 years old, you know, I have some texture, I have some fine lines and, you know, I don't want that radiant glow because it's gonna attract attention to all of that stuff that I don't want to be exaggerated. So I really appreciate the natural skin-like finish that this has. And even up close, it doesn't look makeup-y and it just looks really natural. So overall, love this. I also am obsessed with their Airlight blushes. So these remind me of a lot of K-Beauty blushes. And I forgot to mention that Joa's products are all made in Korea. They're owned by the brand Kiss, which I don't believe is a Korean brand, but I feel like the formulas are really similar to what I've tried in Korean makeup. And these blushes are super similar. So these are all a matte finish. I love the colors that they come in. And honestly, these have enough pigmentation to where you don't really have to build them up too much on your cheeks, but at the same time, they're not so pigmented that you have to worry about clown cheeks. And I think the best, the biggest selling point for me with these is how silky they are. They just blend on the skin effortlessly and they really live up to the name Air Light Blush because that's how they feel. They're just so weightless. And even though they're a powder, they melt into your skin and sort of become one with it. So it almost gives the appearance of a cream blush even though it's a powder. So they're a really interesting and unique formula. Again, just remind me so much of other things that I've tried from K-Beauty brands. And you don't have to order these from Korea. They're right over at your local CVS store. And I feel like everybody is just kind of walking past these and not realizing what an incredible formula they are. So I highly recommend these from Joa. Also their Glow Liquid Highlighter is so good. I spotted this at CVS one day and I was like, that kind of reminds me a little bit of the Rare Beauty highlighters. And it truly is such a similar formula. So I would hands down call this a dupe. I have it in the shade Pink Dawn. I I wanna say it comes in at least one other color. It might be a gold, but I just love this shade for my skin tone. I think it's beautiful. And this highlighter is so thin. It has almost a serum-like texture and it's really, really reflective and pearlescent, but without too much glitter. So when I apply this, I'm not seeing those glitter particles, but I am just seeing this really incredible sheen on my skin. And because it's so thin and lightweight, it really just sinks right in. So like I said, it reminds me a lot of the Rare Beauty highlighters. And I think the formula is just really similar. Again, it's just a really great alternative at the drugstore that's much more affordable. And of course, I couldn't talk about Joa without mentioning their concealer. So this is their eye serum concealer. It has ceramides and peptides. It's amazing on dry under eyes. Again, I don't know if you're oily or combo. I'd love to hear if you've tried this and what your experience was with it. But I know for me, the first time I tried this, it was in different packaging. They've since redone it. The first time I tried this, I thought it was gonna be like the Maybelline Age Rewind because it has the little sponge tip applicator like that one. But as I've gotten older, I'm not a huge fan of the Maybelline. For some reason, it's started to look dry under my eyes. So I'm not sure if they have reformulated that one or if I'm just getting older and maybe I don't get on with it anymore but this one looks so good. It's really smoothing. It has this super thin and weightless feel to it, and it almost makes my under eyes look smoother, if that's even possible. It was weird when I first put it on. You know, you always expect a concealer to kind of like sink into the fine lines just a little bit and enhance texture that's under your eyes. And with this, when I put it on, I don't know if it just kind of plumped up my skin or it added hydration 
lotion or something because I noticed after I used it, I was like, wow, my under eyes actually look better than they did before concealer. So that's what really sold me on this one. It's not the heaviest coverage. So just keep that in mind if you need a lot of coverage. This is definitely on the lighter side, but I find that for me, it just really brightens up my eye area and I love how smooth it looks. So this is amazing. And then speaking of Korean beauty, I feel like that's a whole nother video that I could do because these products just don't get enough hype and enough love here in the United States. But I recently tried these lip products from Nature Republic. They're called the Honey Melting Lip. I found them on Amazon and they were, I wanna say like 10 to 12 bucks each. So they're on the more affordable side and they looked a lot like the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips. So I decided to try them and just see if maybe it could be like a possible dupe. But, but these are actually nothing like those. So yes, they do come in the same exact packaging. I mean, it looks really similar. It has the little um, click up style pen and they do have this really melty texture and a ton of shine. Like they look like a lip gloss in a stick type of thing. But when you apply these to your lips, the Tarte ones, as if you've tried them, you know, they're so melty that I feel like they almost seem like they're gonna come off like your lips. They're gonna drip off because they just have such a slippery feel. They almost turn into like an oil when you put them on. So they're not the longest lasting product in the world. And you know, if you're worried about something migrating outside of your lip lines, I think the Maracuja Juicy Lips are just like a little bit too slippery. These, just like the name suggests, have this honey-like texture. So they are a little bit on the stickier side. And I know some people who don't like sticky lip products just avoid these, but I feel like sticky glosses definitely have their place because they are great for days when you just want your gloss to last a little bit longer. And these really do. I mean, they almost create like this film that hugs your lips and I feel them for hours, even after the color and the shine kind of wears away. I feel like the hydration from these just kind of gets locked in and they stay put on your lips so much longer than the Tarte ones do. So they may look like the Tarte, but I feel like they're a completely different type of formula. They do have a scent. Um, I know the Tarte ones smell like coconut. These are kind of fruity. I'm trying to place exactly like what kind of fruit it is. Mango or something. It, it smells kind of tropical, but I don't mind it at all. And once it's on my lips, I don't really smell it that much anymore. So anyway, I just wanted to mention these because I felt like they were a really nice formula. And again, super hydrating for dry lips. They really help to smooth out my lip lines. So I've been enjoying these a lot and I just wanted to mention them. Also, another lip gloss that I just feel like it doesn't get enough hype, but I really wanna see it take off is the gloss from Revlon. So as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of the Revlon Super Lustrous Lipsticks. And just on a side note, I don't, I didn't want to include these in this video because I feel like people are finally starting to notice these and they are taking off and going viral. I've seen so many posts about them recently and I'm actually glad to see these finally getting the recognition that they deserve because they're absolutely my favorite lipstick formula, whether drugstore or high end. I love that they don't have a fragrance to them. They are so creamy. So I'm really happy to see those kind of becoming more popular. But the gloss is another one from Revlon that I just think like these could go the way of their glass shine lipsticks that really took off right before they discontinued them. Um, but I am wearing one today. This is called Pinkissimo. I don't know, I can't read small print anymore. <laughs> As I get older, I think I need like the reading glasses or whatever, but it, anyway, it's number 210, I can see that. And this one is just a beautiful pink with a little bit of a sheen to it. I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit, but I love how, again, very smooth and cushiony these are. So these are not a sticky formula. If you don't like sticky glosses, these are for you. They feel a little bit like um, kind of a thicker lip oil. So not the kind of lip oil that sinks right into your lips and kind of disappears quickly. It has that more like plush, cushion type of feel as you press your lips together. They're so soft. They have a light vanilla scent that's really pleasant. Again, not something that you notice once it's on your lips. And I just love how hydrating and how smoothing these are. And they're not a plumping formula, so you don't get any kind of a tingle. They just feel really nice on your lips, kind of like a liquid lip balm. So love these. What else did I wanna talk about? I felt like I had so many things. Oh, the L'Oreal 
telescopic original mascara. I know I've talked about this before on my channel too, but I bought a new tube of it and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna talk about this again because it's so good. If you are somebody who values length out of a mascara more than volume, you will love this. This makes my lashes so long. I'm wearing it today and it does, it adds a little bit of volume, but I feel like that's not really the purpose of this formula. It really is just supposed to give you that long, fluttery kind of lash look. And I love the skinny wand that this has too, because having hooded eyes, if I have a big mascara wand, I always get it all over my lids. No matter what, a bigger wand just makes me so clumsy. So I love this really skinny, skinny wand. And also it's great for your bottom lashes and this does not smudge on me and most mascaras do. So I feel like it's a really long lasting formula, even the non-waterproof one. I would say this one and Maybelline Sky High are the two that I think really are the longest lasting drugstore mascaras that don't smudge and kind of similar to each other they have a similar brush but this one is the original and I think I like it even just a little bit better than sky high also with all of the hype now around the new milk makeup jelly blushes I feel like gel blushes are starting to come back into favor a little bit and I'm wondering if this one is going to take off again this is from pixie and it's their sheer cheek gel cheek stain. That was kind of hard to say. Um, this is a product that reminds me so much and I'm totally dating myself here, but when I was a kid and like in my early teens, there was one from Bonnie Bell, their cheek gel, that was just my favorite holy grail product. And I even got my mother into using that way back in the early nineties when I was just getting into my teens. And my mom is not a makeup person. She never wears makeup unless it's like a special event. Maybe we're going to a wedding or a big party, then she'll put on a little bit, but she hates just the way that makeup feels on her skin. She doesn't like wearing foundation. I mean, she goes bare faced pretty much every day, but this is one of the things that she has in her very tiny makeup collection. She has this and like a mascara, and I don't, that might even be it. Maybe she has like one lip product, but. But I remember when the Bonnie Bell cheek gel was discontinued and then she was looking for something that gave a really similar result and I had turned her on to the Tarte blush sticks that they have. I think they just re-released them not that long ago. Um, and she obviously liked the look of those, but they were really expensive compared to the Bonnie Bell one. But she ended up liking the Tarte one and she just kind of bought one like once a year or something until I saw these at Target a couple years ago and I was like, oh, they're like the Bonnie Bell gel blush. And I remember buying one and I brought it over to her house and she was so happy. She doesn't have to buy the Tarte one anymore. This is just for me, nostalgia in a tube, but I also think it's a really good formula. So even though it looks really dark in the tube, it just goes on super sheer. You can build it up to whatever you want. And because it has that really thin gel texture, it sinks into your skin immediately and kind of creates a little bit of a stain. So it lasts the entire day and it dries down completely so it doesn't feel sticky or greasy. And it's one of those products that looks so natural. It's like you're not even wearing makeup. And I think circling back to my mom, that's why she loves this blush so much. So if you're looking for a blush that really just looks like you are blushing and you're not wearing any makeup, try this, I think you'll really like it. Another product from Pixi that I tried recently that I haven't heard anybody talking about, but I think it's so nice, are these tint fixes. And these are basically like a blurring tint. So they have a moussey texture. You can use them on cheeks and lips. I prefer them on my cheeks just because moussey textures can sometimes be a little bit drying on my lips and exaggerate my lip lines a little bit more. These aren't the worst offender. They don't feel dry, but after several hours, I feel like they look a little bit dry. And I can get around that by applying this and then putting on a clear gloss or you know a lip balm or something. But I'm wearing this shade on my cheeks today and this is called Soft, which I think is just the perfect name for this color because it really is just the softest subtle pink. But I also do have a couple of other shades that I wanted to share with you. I have Calm, which is also a softer color. It's it's kind of more like the warmer toned version of soft. And then I also have a door, which is a brighter, more pop of orange. And this one surprisingly is really pretty as well. And what I really love about this, like it's just such an easy product. I'm just gonna put a little bit more on. You can just tap it on your cheek and then just take your finger and kind of blend it. 
and it's so effortless and it dries down immediately to a powder because it has that moussey type of feel. And it's just a really quick and easy blush and they last on your skin. Like they really hold on for the majority of the day. So I feel like this is another very under the radar kind of product, but it's so good and it's really versatile too. Just quickly on my eyes, I'm wearing one of these little travel palettes from Moira. And I feel like their big palettes get all of the hype and attention, but these, I remember getting them and I tried them, but then I don't know why, I just sort of put them to the side and I wasn't using them as much as like their bigger ones. And I recently saw these again when I was doing my eyeshadow palette declutter, which I just did like two weeks ago. And I fell in love with them all over again. I've been wearing them. Uh, today I have Twilight Dreams on my eyes, which has like kind of greens and blues, but they're a little bit more on the subtle side. And it's just like a nice earthy color story. And I also really love Silver Mist. This one has the most beautiful cool tones and these shimmer shades, oh my goodness, like they are so foiled. They're just really gorgeous and really shiny, but they're not like a glitter. They're not toppers. They actually have a lot of pigmentation behind them. For today's look, I used this one in my crease. I used this in my outer corner and then this one on the lid. And I just felt like it was so nicely pigmented. Everything performed really well. These are super affordable. Plus I have a 15% off code for Moira. And I love how slim and compact these are, but you get nine shades shades. So that's sort of rare with travel palettes. I feel like at the most you get like four to six colors in a smaller palette. But with these, I feel like I could pack them on a vacation and have a little bit more options to play with and create more than just one look with it. So I think these are so cute and nobody is really talking about them. So anyway, guys, I think that's all that I have, but I'm sure there are more things out there that I'm not thinking of. And I'd love to hear what your under the radar and hidden gem type products are down in the comments below. What makeup do you love that hasn't gone viral, but you think it should? And what do you think of any of the products that I mentioned today? I would love to hear your thoughts on those as well. And I just wanna take a second to just thank all of you so much for clicking on this video and for spending part of your time watching. I truly, truly appreciate it. And again, if you enjoyed this video, if you're new here, I hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you have some extra time, you'd like to watch something else, I'll go ahead and just put another video right up here that you can check out next. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video. Take care guys, bye.